ebusuya ya mama kwaba sonko so eba POG media and ya de mwako highway ni so highway ni die and some baby was why yen so ya je pene se ya beme ya bija fono ahun die eko eni die eba na dena eko so ewa highway ni so e ye kwe si prat eni de and some baby ababe tujwa enye asam ketu akwa about nana abdan kwa eko fwado ne resha fula o ye ye a ah, finance minister Sisiano waje ni position e fini se ma wa electe another finance minister Sisiano or de Ken Ofori Ata aye ni personal advisor enye asem ketu akwa na kwesi prat aba aba be kan ensem bebre afa ho an ensem ma aba be kan no enbe watutu bi amane na na adu dan kwa ekufu adu a enye asem ketu akwa na ose Sa ne risha fu ya o ye ye die, e ye very useless. Die, risha fu ya o ye ye ye. Gana, ya, ya, ya pasa a risha fu na, na na do dan kwa e kufu ado. O ba ba, o ba ba da da e no wa ye no na, ne risha fu ya o ye ye ye. Nyan sa bi e ni ma, e nye asem ketu ako. O kasa e, o ka e, se mbe bri, na nene se mo o ka e no. Ye be pe se, ye be mi a bija fu no, be mi a kona, ya kwa kuti e nse ma, Kwesi Pratt Jr. E de e tu yana asa ni ebe kono. Owo en se mkanyi bi afa she. Ye comment section like she. Ma afo fron so no. En sa en tu mi en kabina. We en a Dr. Baumia. En tru a u cha che gana fo no. E ye Kwesi Pratt an so. Aba. Aba expose in en tru na u cha. E she gana fo no. Kwesi Pratt en de watu tu e ja. Ama ni Dr. Baumia an kasa ha. Enye asem ke tuwa kwa ya. Besa naswa kaya mo se. Eye POG Media. Mede masi. Campos as Mineral Commission's GMPC Amanka. That's quick question that from West Legon. Thank you for that message. There's also... This one says, greetings to you and your panelists. God bless you and give you strength to sit and work for six days in a week. God strengthen Kwesi Pratt uh, for Ghanaians. I always learn great history of Ghana and politics from him. Uh, thank you very much for sending in that message. Many more coming in. Mohammed Inalaju says, I want to ask, ever since Albambagwin took over as Speaker of Parliament, he's never given... Uh, Okay, he's never given a chance. Okay, he's never been given a chance to act as caretaker president. Why? What do they? Why are they afraid of? Or is it intentional? Stranger things have happened. This one says, a "Good morning." Um, joining us uh, from who? Francis from who says, "Please, I would like to find out when the MPP will pay Napco arrears." Francis sent that from who? That's the only thing he said he wants to find out. Martin Amevo says. Uh, uh, okay, so my, my principal concern is of the issue on Alaji Baumia's pronouncement saying he's a driver's mate. First and foremost, I would like to know if it is legal or illegal for a driver to work with a spare driver who does not own a license. So I particularly have taken my time to ask a mate on what is functioning as a mate or his role uh, as a driver's mate. And the following are his, res are his response. As a mate, I am responsible for conducting of all activities on the bus regarding the collection of transportation fare from all passengers during working hours for daily accountability, which implies that even as a mate, he has a requisite role to play, but not to be just shouting, Abe Kalapas, Abe Kalapas. Also, he says he's in charge of supervising on when the bus is ready to move, also when and where it is necessary to stop or to move, which implies that he and the, as the mate, that's a large bomb, my colleague can tell the driver, Nanado, when to stop. That is to say, to disagree with a bad policy, which is not favorable. And also, capable of telling the driver, President Nanado, to move. That is to say, accepting a policy if it is a good one. Moreover, he is the mate. He has the mate. But also being the head of the economic team, is he is to make sure all his interactions with both the driver, that's Nanado, the passengers, the, the, the citizens of Ghana, come into good agreement, which favors each and every one on the bus throughout the journey. Thank you very much for that message. Uh, there's this one says, so glad to see uh, Brother Kuchumbuafu back in the show. Hope he has come to stay. <laughs> uh, this one from uh, Michael Nomanyu from Domi Kwabenya. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. 
for that message. This is uh, Edouard Manquirek, who is joining us from Kumase Bwakwa, says, when Ghanaians are demanding for Risha, for Kufuado told us that those uh, who are saying uh, those unemployed Ghanaians who are seeking for employment. Mr. Pratt? Well, clearly, this reshuffle or shuffling of ministerial positions has been anticipated for two years. And it's important to recognize that virtually every part of Ghana, including some in the leadership of the new patriotic party, wanted this reshuffle. Now, why did they want the reshuffle? And there are a number of reasons why this reshuffle was demanded by the people of Ghana. One, hmm? part of the idea was to reduce the size of government. Because the size of government had become burdensome. So a lot of people thought that it was time for the president to reshuffle his ministers and take advantage to reduce the numbers. The second reason, just in plain incompetence. The economy was running aground, many things were not happening, and there was a general feeling, even within the new patriotic party, that new hands may help to correct some of the problems that have bedeviled the economy and bedeviled several sectors of, of national life. Now, two years ago, the president responded to this clamor for reshuffle. And he said it was completely unnecessary that he was satisfied with the team that he was working with and that he had already delivered on the promises that he had made to the people of Ghana. Now, so if two years later he's making this reshuffle, is he responding to the demands which were made two years ago for the reshuffle? Or there could be other reasons for the reshuffle. Now, you would recall that not too long ago, somebody described the president as a lame duck president. And he took serious offense. And said that he would be in control until the very last day of his term. I hope you remember. Is it possible that all of this is to show that he's in control? Is this possible? I don't know. Now, with regards to those who advocated that there was a need for, for, for a reshuffle to reduce the numbers of government, clearly, this reshuffle is not in response to that. Because the size of government has not been reduced at all. So this cannot be a response to that. Then if you look at those who wanted changes, because of the level of competence in the administration, it's also obvious that this is not a response to that. Okay. Because one of the persons that many people including members of the new patriotic party felt had to go because of incompetence was the finance minister. Now he's been elevated, you know, to, to a glorious position. He's not just senior presidential advisor on finance and the economy. He is also... Hmm, a presidential special envoy on virtually all international transactions. And I'm wondering, special envoy? So he works directly for the president when it comes to international transactions. The president's messenger, huh? the president's direct extension when it comes to international transactions. I'm wondering, so this new Minister of Finance, 
Are we being told that it doesn't have the competence to deal with international tra transactions? Is that what we're being told? And if it doesn't have the competence to deal with international transactions, why make him minister of finance? I don't know. I'm just confused, as many Ghanaians are. Now, there are some things which are very interesting about this reshuffle. And since the reshuffle took place, even leading members of the New Patriotic Party have spoken out. Two of those are the immediate past national chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Freddie Wasmau Blay. And he's saying that this reshuffle could have made sense, hmm? could have made some impact if it had happened two years ago. And I would virtually eight or nine months eh, to get to the finishing line. This reshuffle has no merit. You understand? Then there is Mr. Kodo Mpienim, who was Minister of Presidential Affairs under President Kufo and uh, 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 Minister of Presidential Affairs and Chief of Staff. He has made virtually the same comment that it is too late in the day for this reshuffle to make any impact. Now, Senator, there are about 17 ministers who may have to go for, 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 for parliamentary vetting. Mm -hmm. And it is possible, based on their performance, and if the so-called minority members of parliament are diligent in their work. They haven't been diligent in their work over a long period of time, especially when it comes don't to... Fair. Don't, don't be unfair to us. I'm being very fair. <laughs> I'm being very fair. I think I've, I've, be, I've been too fair to, to the so-called minority in parliament. Listen, after one vetting exercise, and madam, you can deny it if I'm wrong, I heard minority MP say that, look, we, we actually voted for this ministerial nominee because he comes from our region. How reckless can they be? Not just reckless, foolish. Comes from our region. Is that how to approve ministers? And then the one which even killed me completely was when some minority MP said that some particular nominee had been good to them. Good to them. What does that mean? Good to them. Amazing. So if they are diligent with their work, if they do their work, they do their work properly. This vetting process uh, of 17 persons can take anything from two months to three months. Okay? Now, after they have been vetted, they now have to go through the process of acclimatizing, knowing their ministers, the ministers to which they, they, they've been posted, and so on. That takes another time. By the time they begin to sit down on their seats, and mind you, the vast majority of them are also contesting for parliamentary elections. So they now have to rush to the constituencies to go and campaign. They can't do nothing. As they say in local parlance, they can't do FOCO. You understand? I mean, just the timelines shows that they can't do anything. So Freddie Blair was right. Kodon Pienim was right. And I'm sure all those who are skeptical about how they're going to transform things must be right. So why this reshuffle at this time? It is possible mm, that once again, the president is engaged in cosmetics. You know, and, and cosmetics can only be meant to deceive. 
You understand? Create the impression that something is happening when indeed nothing is happening. And, and to be honest with you, this reshuffle, <laughs> sometimes I struggle to choose my words, but this reshuffle appears to be absolutely meaningless. There's another aspect which is interesting. If you read the 1992 Constitution, and, and, and happily lawyer is here, the 1992 Constitution says that deputy ministers hmm, ought to be chosen in consultation with sitting ministers. Now, take the Minister of Information. The minister has been kicked out or sent to another ministry, transferred to another ministry, and a deputy has been appointed. Who did the president consult in appointing that deputy? Is that in sync with the provisions of the, of the 1992 constitution or not? That's an issue which is going to come up. You understand? Now, yesterday, I heard a spokesperson of the New Patriotic Party say that the constitution only suggests that the president may consult the minister. But you see, nothing is put in the constitution for nothing. If the constitution found it necessary to suggest consultation with the deputy minister, there ought to be a reason for that suggestion. And it cannot be thrown away just like that. So that's an issue. Now, the other thing which is very important in, in, in examining this reshuffle is the role of Vice President, His Excellency Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Bahumia. The former boys begin. Was he involved? He is promising us that if he becomes president, he will reduce the number of ministers to 50. Now, why should we wait till he becomes president? He's part of the presidency. So how come that this great idea of reducing the number of ministers to 50 does not find expression in this reshuffle? Is he going to argue that he's an apranke? Now, is he that whole argument that he's only the assistant headmistress is an apranke and so on? Huh? It, 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 it's very damaging to him. Now, he goes to cabinet meetings. Hmm? He consults with the president and so on. Now, if his ideas are not being implemented, it may also be an indication of his incapacity to convince his colleagues. He doesn't have the, the, the facts. He doesn't have the language to convince his colleagues to tow his line. And if he cannot convince his own cabinet to tow his line, who else is he going to convince? Because as president, he's going to be representing this country in many fora. You understand? So if in his own cabinet, for seven years, he has failed to convince his cabinet to come along with him, then there's a huge problem. Now, it is even worse if you come to consider the fact that he is an economist, they say. Hmm? He's an economist, they say. On one area where his ideas have not shown at all, manifested at all, is the area of the economy. So with a PhD in economics, he still cannot convince his colleagues to come along with him. Wow, something is wrong. Something is wrong. You understand? So if Dr. Balmia today is going to argue that this is shuffle, he was not involved. He was not considered relevant enough to be consulted. That's another huge problem. His own party, his own government don't think that he has anything to offer. 
Now, if they considered him relevant enough to be consulted, and he failed to persuade his boss, party, and cabinet that there was a need to reduce the size of government, that's also a huge blow to himself. And I sit back and I ask, why is this man inflicting pain on himself? Why is he throwing blows at himself and his ambition all the time? Anytime he opens his mouth, foul. Why? Now, hmm, I read Dr. Atta Kwabuna Kennedy's evaluation hmm, of some of the claims that the vice president has made. I dare not repeat some of the things that Atta Kennedy said. I dare not. But mind you, Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado, the president, his excellency, some time ago, when he was looking for a campaign manager, he looked around the whole country, more than 30 million of us, and he came to the conclusion that the best person to manage his campaign was Dr. Atta Kwabna Kennedy. Hmm? So what Kennedy says must have value, must have weight, at least on the basis of the judgment of the current president. Go and read what he has written. Senna, I promised on this show, I think two weeks ago, that I would find the doctoral thesis of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Don't worry, I have it. <laughs> and when I find it, I will publish it. Luckily, I have it. And, and, and I think that people should read his doctoral thesis. So when they hear Dr. Mahmoud Bahumia, hmm, when they read the thesis, they will find how some academics decided to give him a PhD. His thesis explains everything. And I hope that people will find time. Abusuya Wene and Sama Kwesi Pratt Jr. at the Etu Jana and Sama the Tu Jana de Aye Bibi Yabedaya Bidafono as a say Omoje Pene Elko Kutis are audio we at the Maya. Yabasan so I can say, oh, and some can be our debate. The comment section while well, I can was answer, I say, I'm a full phone, so no answer it to me. I can be better,